from Hanny in Sydney, Australia. Are you there? I am here. How are you guys? Good. Um, what's up? Oh, it's Harry. Um, just firstly, this is a such a great show. I caught on to you guys a few weeks uh, a few weeks ago, and you know I really love and respect the things that you guys do. I think it's terrific. Um, but from a further standpoint, I just want to suggest or maybe discuss something with you. I'm sure you guys may have already thought of this, but um, from a universal standpoint for the human race, um, what I see what I see that's occurring at the moment is that we're now sitting at a similar at a similar argument um, um, that's like you know the whole world is round and the world is argument that occurred you know long ago and um it, eventually we got to the point where we where we were able to prove that the world is spherical and that throughout the whole that throughout the whole argument out the window okay you know that <laughs> happened like a couple thousand years before some people think it did, right? You know the ancient Greeks knew that the world was round. Yeah, there were, there were, there were ways to prove it, you know, um, using sh sh the, um, the measurement of shadows and how shadows lengthen across a, a round surface as opposed to a flat surface. Mm -hmm. Have you heard? Okay. But besides that, anyway, um, I just want to talk about the, the standpoint of where the show is in particular like the atheist, like the atheist experience and the position that it, assert, that it asserts. And the whole, the level of the playing field that, the, that you are, that I'm right and you're wrong level. I'm an atheist myself. And uh, a lot of the stuff that you guys talk about and mention and, and uh, discuss it is, is very close to the way I see it as well. And you guys stand for something. You stand for truth. You stand to uncover a lot of the bullshit that's occurring across the entire planet. Well, we but like to question, try. Thank thing, you. The, the, thing, the thing that I want to go over is what is, is it possible for us as a human race, for the 7 billion people, to create a standpoint that is above the argument of the I'm right, the you're wrong? Where, what is the next step, or can we create the next step for us as a human race to say that you know that every everybody can establish as their core identity the fundamental core identity of everyone is that is that our our identities are searching to identify the identity in in a, does that make sense no is that we're trying to find yeah. we're trying to find our place in this universe what, what is it that we're doing in all these questions you know, that, that sort of, that go around every human, well, almost every human every human being's brain. So is there one truthful unifying statement that can, that can establish kind of like a mission statement of a company? Probably you know, not. That... No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I mean, here's the problem. Every person is a unique individual, like you say, and every person has their own mind and their own objectives. And uh, anything that we come up with a, as a mission statement uh, and, and we describe it as this is what we want is not going to be true for some people. Uh, you know, there are broad guidelines and, and uh, rules that we can come up with that help all these different people uh, live together mostly without killing each other. We hope. Yeah. Um, but you're never get. But you're never going to come up with some kind of universal uh, statement of value that encompasses everyone's uh, interests. Okay. So we'll, if we take, for example, a company like IBM. Okay. IBM has four hundred thousand uh, employees working for. The right. The company's. Like, the company has to establish for itself, like, a core mission statement. You know, that's something that, it like, it stands for innovation. It stands for um, uh, the betterment of its product or whatever it is. So sure, that's but, universal sure, but what you're missing here is that participation in, I, participation in IBM is voluntary. Yeah. I mean, you know, IBM decides that their mission statement is something that is is what the founders actually want, or the or the current CEO and and the board of directors that guide the vision for IBM. But anybody uh, who is working there can decide 
that they are interested in furthering that goal or not, or they're interested in pretending that they want to further that goal uh, to the extent that it can help them pull a steady paycheck, which is not a small thing in this economy. Yeah. Um, uh, but, I mean, IBM doesn't get to make up a mission statement for everybody on Earth. I understand that. But is it, is it, so how is it, how, if unification is, how, well, how can the human race unite on, on this, on this well, core level? If there is a division, the thing, this is the thing, if the Earth is divided at a core level, like at, at its most fundamental level, Right? How is how is the unification going to occur without this? If there's groups of people saying that they believe in Allah, and this person, this group of people are saying they believe in Jesus Christ, and this, well, well, and this, all this is going, which which in a sense affects choices and affects the actions that people take. Like um, this young Muslim girl can't marry this young Christian, but well, they can. But they're going to face a lot of problems. Um, well, let, let me ask you at, something. At their core oh. level. Well, uh, which really let me ask you something. What, why, yes, would, why, why do you think that some kind of unification is, is desirable, and what do you mean by that? Uh, if you're watching, hang on, if you're watching over the internet right now, could you cut off your feed of the show so that we can not get feedback from ourselves uh, on the air? Yeah. I'm, I'm not watching on the internet. I'm not. Okay. Okay, okay. you might need to put a head... A pair of headphones on, but I guess it's a little late for that. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. So my question was, what do you mean by unification, and why do you think that's a good thing? Um, because I think I, I think that in unification, a greater a greater power can be formed. Like we. To like, do what? Whenever. Well, whatever it is that we're growing towards. Be, care be careful about forming greater powers. You know that absolute power corrupts absolutely, yeah. as they say. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm not uh, sure that everybody joining together to decide what's right for, ev uh, for all future generations is really something desirable that we ought to work towards yeah. at all. Mm. I mean, uh, I, I would be happy if we get to a point where more people understand that we create our own meaning in life and you know we have the intrinsic value and and worth as human beings that, that we attribute to ourselves and that they don't look for some external power to do that for us i mean and, and basically what you're talking about sounds like you're you're trying to set up some other larger external power to provide that to someone and i think it's valuable for people to do that on their own i i may have used i may have used the wrong word what I'm trying to set up is that we each, we each, every human being has this awareness that seems to recognize the consciousness. Like I know that I know that I am, and my identity is trying to figure out what is this identity that I have. And I think okay. this is like the like the fundamental point of everything that humans do. That I that I can say I could be wrong about this, of course. Um, but the atheist experience for finding the truth, um, and essentially, and religions kind of stand for the a, they stand for what they think is the truth, but they've sort of gone in some some wrong direction. But fundamentally, at, at the core of us, is that we're all trying to find out more. And we are evolving. I mean, I wasn't... If, if we had evolved from cells billions of years ago, when the Earth... If that is, if that is um, the accepted truth of what we are, then clearly we're evolving towards something. We're growing towards something. I mean, I've got five senses now. I didn't have five senses. There's, there's no evidence that we're growing toward anything. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think you're committing a fallacy yeah. by just trying to make an assumption that you can predict the future uh, based on the past. I mean, I think that anybody who actually studies evolution would have to honestly say that there's no, in, you know, that there's no way of knowing which way uh, any species will evolve in the future. Yeah. I mean, educated guesses are the best they can make, 
the, I think that this idea that you're trying to come up with about the inevitability of some particular thing happening just isn't supported. Yes, you're right. You're right. I'm try I, I suppose I'm trying to see it as a possibility um, and the hope that the human race could somehow come together to improve itself and take itself to a new level that's out of the fantasies that it's in at the moment. Well, I and, guess that's, and we're that's, getting that's, there. That's the, that's the wish, yeah. I mean, we are we are getting there. I mean, if you look at at the way we are right now, the way the world is right now, we're in a in a much more peaceful time. Um, you know, people. Uh, yeah, well. yeah. Look look at look at uh, back at ancient history, and if you look at you know the wars that took out larger percentages of population at one time. Right, per uh, you know, percentage-wise, I guess. Yeah, I mean, there just weren't that many people on the planet. But, you know, uh, a larger percentage of them died in, in violent conflicts. They died of disease. Um, you know, they died in disasters, all kinds of things. And, and, you know, we've used our big brains to overcome a lot of these obstacles to human survival. That's why we have 7 billion people on the planet now. Um, and, and even situations like starvation, you know, people have applied their knowledge think, of things to... I think uh, we're going to have to let this be the last part of the response to yeah. Hanny since we're still getting that feedback. Yeah. Um, but if, if you want to say one last thing, then we'll take it off the air. Um, no, I was just, well, no, I mean, I'm, in, I'm with you on this, on, uh, on this right. that we've definitely been in a better place than what we've been in the last 10,000 years. Definitely headed in a better direction, anyways. Like okay. Well, I like to end on an upbeat note. <laughs> so, okay. thanks for your call and uh, email thanks. us if you have any more thoughts. Um, and I think you know, constant, steady improvement is the best that we can really do. Yeah. But I mean, and finish your thought. Well, I mean, I mean if you if, if you just look back in in history, I mean, it, it, and you don't even have to go any further than the Bible to look at um, the history that it records and and Everything that's recorded in there is not fiction. There's actually some history in there, and we can look at sources outside the Bible to find evidence that certain things took place. And you know, especially when it talks about armed conflict, that's fairly easy um, to verify because you've got two parties who don't necessarily have an interest in reporting um, the same events the same way. But if you've got uh, two um, parties in conflict who record the events in a similar way, you can get a, be a lot more confident that that actually happened. And so based on this, we can look at that and say, well, you know, there were some really bloody conflicts that happened in ancient history. Um, and if you look now, we don't have these things. I mean, we're talking about conflicts that spanned most of what was the known world at that time um, and encompassed entire civilizations. And we just don't see that happening in the world today where, you know, one conflict spans entire civilizations and drags, you know, whole populations of people down with it. Um, except for maybe, you know, we've got a few genocides going on right now, but, mm, um, yeah. you know, um, even those um, percentage-wise don't compare to the genocides that occurred in, in some of the ancient societies. Sure, I'll go I with mean, that. Um, so, I, you know, I think we are getting better. And, and, you know, like you said, incremental progress, that's, that's probably the best we can do. Right. 